Hi, back in uh, 2013, June to be uh, precise, I had this uh, solar array installed, a uh, three kilowatt uh, solar power system on my home roof here. And if you haven't seen that video, I'll link it in down below. It's the installation of it and going through all the various uh, technical aspects of it. I've got how many? Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12 LG Mono X uh, panels for a total system of uh, three kilowatts here, a total nominal uh, power output of uh, three kilowatts anyway. So it's been running for not quite two years now, but you know, a good 18 months. So a lot of people have been asking, can I get the data from this and see how it's uh, performed over that time and uh, comment on that. So yeah, let's do it. Let's take a look at uh, some of the figures I've gotten out of this thing because I have been logging all the data that comes out of it and uh, see if this thing has been worthwhile or not. Let's go. And for those wondering, uh, no, I haven't cleaned this system at all in well, <laughs> since it's been installed. So uh, of course, the, when you get dirt on these things um, and you know, little little uh, bird droppings and all sorts of crap like that, it can uh, reduce the output efficiency. But look, this has never ever been cleaned. Yeah, it's got some dirt on it, but uh, yeah, it's hard to get an actual benchmark figure of whether or not the dirt has made a difference, but not really. They've been, I think they've been fairly uh, self-cleaning in that respect anyways. And things like the uh, DC isolator box here, which I haven't uh, touched since installed. I think, I'd have to check my previous footage, but I think it was a pretty white box when they installed it. So maybe it's um, it's turned yellow, maybe some uh, bromide in the plastic. The roof uh, penetrator here, for example, um, that's still in really good nick. Um, looks like no deterioration of the rubber or anything like that. So the system seems to have held up uh, quite nicely um, in uh, terms of maintenance. I mean, it has, as I said, been absolutely zero maintenance over all this time. And you can probably, might be able to see some dirt on there. I can't see it on the screen, but yeah, um, it's, I've had no issues. So the installation was all fine and these LG Mono XR panels, um, no issue. They are top of the line uh, panels, of course. I paid a lot extra for these LG Mono X ones, not just, uh, you know, some uh, cheap ass no name ones. And of course, I paid a lot extra for this uh, Sunny Boy inverter as well. Once again, top of the line, it's the uh, SB3000 uh, TL. It's got the Bluetooth interface, and that's what I've been uh, logging the data from on this thing. And, and you can actually see the uh, isolators here. Yeah, I think that's the, that's the original color of that isolator box. So I do have auto white balance on this thing, but yeah, trust me, that other one is very yellow. So it's had sun light on it. This one is on the shady uh, side of the house and it's basically covered by a big tree here. It basically, this system, the inverter does not get any sunlight. That's one of the things you don't want to install one of these things um, in direct sun, which is why they actually went to the effort to mount it right on this side of the house. This is on the other side of the house. So they actually, there's some loss in the uh, very long cable runs, which have to come from the solar panel which are on the other side of the house here. But anyway, let's have a look at our total power output. The basically very overcast at the moment. Um, we're only generating 160 watts. It's bugger all. It's uh, 4.30 in the afternoon here and um, it's uh, it, sun's starting to go down, but usually it'd be still generating a lot more than that. Uh, you can see that today we've generated 10.6 uh, kilowatt hours for a system total. This thing has not been re uh, reset at all since it was installed so the total power with it uh, output from our solar panels over however long we've been doing it, 18 months is 7.396 megawatt hours beauty so you can see the curve for today how it uh, ramped up like that and it's just really dro dropped off it was sunny before but now it's uh, overcast and if I tap on this like oh there we go there's the backlight I should have turned that on before but I can give it a double tap it's got a little tap sensor in there this is now um, the output per day so this is 20 kilowatt hours like that and you can see every day it's sort of you know depends on how uh, sunny it is really and um, cloud and solar insulation as well and the whole thing but that's uh, just some data output over the last uh, a week or two and here's my meter box here. You can see my old uh, meter, which they uh, disconnected when they installed this thing. And they installed two new meters here. And uh, 
Yeah, and there we go. We've got one here and one there. This top one here is basically, that is how much I have uh, consumed. And it's almost um, 6.7 uh, megawatt hours over all this time period. I'll get the exact number of uh, days soon when we do some uh, calculations. But, ta-da! You can see that just from a warm, fuzzy point of view, this, this uh, three kilowatt solar power system has generated more energy. You remember it was almost uh, 7.4 megawatt hours and we've used 6.7 megawatt hours. So we've basically generated about 0.7 megawatt hours or 700 kilowatt hours more than the power we've consumed the last 18 months or whatever it is. Brilliant. So right there, it's a win. A three kilowatt system is good enough for a family of my size and a house like this running all your regular stuff, including air conditioning and uh, things like that. And this meter down here, this one shows how much energy we've exported to the grid because we've got what's called a net metering system here. And what that means is that I only get paid for the energy on this meter here. I, this is the one that I've exported out to the grid, so I haven't used. I've got no battery storage system here, so I can only use the power while it's being generated. So um, the difference in that um, is the amount of energy that we've used. And it's about, uh, it's about a third or thereabouts I've used. So I've used about a third of that uh, 7.4 um, megawatt hours I've actually used in the house. Two thirds of it has been exported. And unfortunately, this net metering system is nowhere near as good a payback as the old system where you used to get paid for all of the energy that you actually produce. So I only get paid for the stuff I export and I get an extremely low rate, only eight cents per kilowatt hour. It is piss poor. So right there, get your calculator out. You can figure out how much I've earned. Ugh, it's not much. Now, having only used a third of the power that we've generated is not really surprising. It's basically what we expected because um, we're not always here during the day, of course, um, uh, but with a, a young family, yes, we're you know, are, are here a lot of hours during the day, more than your average family, you know, where both parents work, both kids go to school, and, and there's basically no one here. Yeah, we do some stuff, and we changed our habits as well. Our washing machine and our dishwasher, for example, we'd put those on uh, during during the day instead of like overnight we used to do before. So now, so those sort of uh, appliances would only use energy during the day here. So um, often, you know, I'd come out here and watch it and we're not um, export, sometimes uh, we were exporting very little and it was full sun and everything. Um, you can see the number of impressions here. This LED will flash, it'll give 800 impressions per kilowatt hour. So you can see it slowly um, flash or it, turn over here. So we did sort of arrange our, our habits a bit in that uh, respect so we'd use more of the solar panel uh, power because basically we're buying electricity, I'll show you the rates later, we're buying it at a much uh, higher rate than we're, what we're exporting it. So it's basically use it or lose it pretty much because we don't get paid much for all this energy that we've exported. So if we had some uh, other power stuff that uh, was going during the day and we could use all that energy, then it'd be much more beneficial. But hey, I, we're actually using more power than your typical family would from their um, solar uh, system. So yeah, we're doing pretty good in that respect. So it's no real surprise that m most people use most of the energy in their house at night because, well, of course you get home from work, the kids get home from school, your uh, lights go on, your TVs go on, your computers go on, uh, you start cooking dinner. Yes, we do have an electric uh, cook top. We do have gas here, but we've only got gas for the hot water and the barbecue out the back. We don't have gas uh, cooking. So the electric cook top goes on, all that sort of jazz. So yeah, you know, things that we could uh, do during the day, we did like the dishwasher and the, um, uh, washing machine, for example, we rarely use a dryer. We're here in Australia, we've got a, you know, a, a hills hoist in the backyard, got a clothesline. So, um, yeah, everything dries naturally. So, but still, you know, lights, TV, computers, all that sort of jazz, cooking all goes on at night. And you're yeah, just chewing two thirds of your power. And in my case, that's exactly what it turned out to be, pretty close to it. But unfortunately, we've got the net metering system here, which means we get paid like one third of what we get charged for. So measured on this meter, we're getting like, you know, 24 cents per kilowatt hour or something down here, we're getting like one third of that. Ugh. 
bastards. If we had a storage system here, battery storage, to uh, capture that energy during the day, then hey, we could be actually completely grid independent here if we wanted to, although you'd still connect to the grid, um, you know, just for uh, the emergency. You wouldn't rely uh, completely on your uh, battery system let you're, unless you're out in a rural property. It just wouldn't make sense. So if we had a battery storage system here, we're technically, we wouldn't pay a cent for our electricity. Apart from the maintenance cost of the battery system, of course, and the uh, amortization of the installation of the solar powered uh, system as well. But hey, as I said, we've had no maintenance uh, issues whatsoever. Haven't had, never had to go up on the roof, do anything, anything at all. So it's been super reliable. It's been a couple of years, not a bad test so far. And yes, we do have uh, fairly energy efficient light in here. Uh, we used to have all our uh, compact fluorescent uh, stuff here in the house, but we switched over to all LED uh, lighting in the house. So that may have uh, lowered our lighting uh, budget and things like that, but it uh, didn't seem to make a huge amount of difference because we're already running uh, fairly efficient compact fluoros, no incandescence or anything like that here. And we do actually have uh, two split system air conditioners here, but we don't often use it. The house has uh, thermal insulation in the uh, walls. This is not a uh, double uh, brick, by the way. It's only single brick, but there is insulation between uh, the brick and the uh, gyp rock inside, and we've got insulation in the roof. Fairly well insulated house, so we don't often have to uh, turn on the aircon, or if we do, there um, there's not a big central air conditioning system, so just cool down the little bit we want, and then we switch it off. We're not one of those families that just run them 24-7 with some bloody climate controlled temperature thing. A lot of people around this area do that, believe me. So I'll just quickly explain the difference between the net metering and the gross metering uh, concept for those who still don't get it yet because it is a bit confusing. As I said, I've got the net metering system which is what is displayed here. So I've got two different meters. Uh, the top one there uh, calculates the energy that I've used and the bottom one there calculates the excess energy which I haven't used during the day while the sun is shining so it gets exported to the grid. Now if I was home all day, I wouldn't be exporting much. In fact, you know, if I was using, if I was generating three kilowatts, uh, for example, and I was using two kilowatts in the house, then I wouldn't be exporting anything. So I wouldn't be earning any money for that energy exported. But I wouldn't be paying for any of the electricity coming from the grid, i.e. that top meter, that 24 cents per kilowatt hour that I'm being charged to uh, buy energy from the grid. Now, in my case here in uh, Sydney, Australia, um, I'm being... I'm, I'm only earning eight cents per kilowatt hour for the energy I export or one third of what I have to buy it for from the grid. It is an absolutely ridiculous system, but hey, that's how it works here in our state. So with the net metering system, if you were getting charged at the same rate as you were using the power, then well, that's okay. You wouldn't have to really be home during the day to make use of that energy, but because my state here has got a ridiculous law where I only earn eight cents per kilowatt hour. For this system to be really effective for me, I have to be home during the day or using energy during the day while the sun is shining and my system is generating. Otherwise, I basically uh, lose it because I'm only earning a lousy eight cents per kilowatt hour if I export it and don't use it. Now, a gross metering system is different in that you export all of the power that you generate to the grid. You don't have the ability to use it, well, at least metering wise, you don't have the ability to use it locally and consume it while you're home during the day. So uh, you will be buying, always buying energy from the grid at that 24 cents per kilowatt hour. So in my case, if I was on a gross uh, metering system, it wouldn't make sense because I'd only be getting charged 8 cents per kilowatt hour for everything I exported to the grid. So I would have the advantage of being able to use that energy during the day. So for a gross metering system to be effective here, I would have to be getting chart I would have to be earning at least the same as what I was taking it from the grid to get a good payback on the thing. So it, it really depends upon uh, how much you're getting for feeding back, i.e. the uh, solar tariff for feeding your energy back into the grid and your usage scenario. Are you home during the day? So it's not a clear cut uh, case of, you know, one's better than the other. It depends on your circumstances. 
Now, unfortunately, I missed the boat on my uh, system because uh, quite a few years ago, the uh, New South Wales government were giving massive feed-in tariff rebates to uh, promote the solar energy uh, take-up in the solar uh, industry and that sort of stuff. And they were giving you 60 cents per kilowatt hour gross. And that was, oh, that was unbelievably generous. In fact, it was too generous that so many people took it up um, here in uh, New South Wales that um, they had to stop the scheme because so many people rushed in because your payback period would be like like a year or two or something. It was crazy. So unfortunately, now it's dropped down to eight cents per kilowatt hour and net metering. Ah, ah, well. As I mentioned, I've been logging the output of this thing since I installed it. And I use a website called pvoutput.org, and I'll link it in uh, down below. All this data is public. Um, so basically, every day uh, I upload, I capture the data with my Sunny Boy inverter. It stores it inside, and then I uh, use a program called uh, PV Bean Counter to automatically uh, extract that via the Bluetooth um, Sunny Boy interface and then upload it to the PV Output. Uh, .org website and uh, this is all my basically daily output uh, here but I can go to monthly for example and you can see it changing over the seasons. This is when I installed it from July uh, 2013 of course which is winter here in Australia everything's upside down here and it peaks in about uh, December there, which is uh, the middle of our summer, and then it goes down and didn't quite reach the same heights. But unfortunately, the uh, data for uh, December uh, 2014 and January uh, this year are incomplete. I've captured the data. I've got them in the uh, CSV files, but unfortunately, I'm having a bit, I've been having a bit of an issue with my program for the last uh, month or two, so I'll eventually be able to uh, upload that data. You can see that's only part month uh, 15 days and like two days in uh, February and uh, 15 days only in December but anyway you can see the change in trends through the season now if we go back to the daily data here I've not only got the maximum output you can see how much I've generated in this column here per day and also the efficiency and I can actually compare these with other similar ones in my area, for example, here's my one, and it's a three kilowatt uh, system. By the way, I am uh, tilting it roughly uh, 15 degrees, roughly northwest-ish or thereabouts. Um, and uh, my efficiency, for example, 3.75 uh, watt hours per kilowatt, um, that's got nothing to do with the size of my array. It's basically how efficient my particular installation is relative to my my nominal three kilowatt output figure. So, you know, this number can either be uh, fudged by saying, oh yeah, my system's four kilowatts when it's actually three, or if you've got uh, manufacturers who don't rate their panels properly and things like that, that can all cause discrepancy. But of course, it's going to change with the uh, solar insulation as well, which is the amount of um, solar energy uh, hitting uh, the earth per uh, square meter, basically, and that does change. It's not going to be, you know, December 30th, one year is not going to be the same output as December 30th the next year, even though it's completely cloudless. Um, the solar insulation actually varies a lot uh, day to day, and we'll be able to probably see that in a second. So I'm doing relatively well on my relative uh, efficiency there. So if we go to my outputs here, the daily ones, for example, look, oh, this looks like one of my best days here. I generated 19.3 kilowatt hours. Let's have a squeeze at that and this is my output time you can see it starts ramping up at about 5 40 p.m the sun's just uh poking up there's a little bit of a dip there so i don't know what happened maybe a cloud passed by or something like that a few little ripples up here but it basically goes very nicely i do sometimes get a fairly sharp drop off at the end because um i've got like a house next door which right at the extreme end of the day depending on the season will start to shadow my solar panels so maybe we can uh, see that a bit better on another one but let's choose another day that was very similar look this one was 19.2 kilowatt hours but look at this. Look at all these huge dips in here. Obviously, we had some huge cloud cover coming over. So instead of like uh, two and a half uh, kilowatts here, I'm get you know, it drops down to under a thousand watts. So, um, but that day generated as much power 
as the other day. So obviously, even with these huge dips in there, so obviously this is to do with the solar insulation uh, figure, the amount of uh, radiation the sun happens to be outputting that particular day. And if you're keen to know about solar insulation, then, well, go check it out. There's tons of info out there for reading. It's not a very often known uh, field, but it's also known as uh, solar irradiation as well. And it varies daily with the output of the sun and all sorts of factors. And it's measured by an instrument called a pyranometer. And here's a, a couple of pictures of these things. And some people actually have them installed on their uh, solar systems like this so that they can log uh, the solar insulation data as well like during the days unfortunately uh pyranometers are very expensive um instruments generally like you know in the like thousand plus dollar range or uh, something like that so they're not very uh cheap uh, to install but anyway you can actually get the data from uh, various uh government agencies in various countries here in australia it's the uh bomb the bureau of meteorology and they've got um it looks like you used to be able to get this data back when i worked on my uh solar air heater my solar sponge which i'll link in down below it's a very old uh, project which i don't have anymore but i experimented with uh, solar air heaters and i used to get the uh live daily data from that but i think you have to like um uh, subscribe now it's free to get the data but anyway there's several sources you can see this uh, map here of Australia just showing the change in solar insulation figure but that will change daily as I said um, not just daily hourly minute by minute even if you've got a perfectly clear sky and the Sun's in exactly the same spot the output can change depending on what the sun is doing and other factors so it, it's quite a complicated field so solar insulation is expressed in watts per square meter and your solar panels here here's my LG Mono XR panel it's not the exact uh, one I've got a 250 watt one anyway it's still exactly the same uh, the standard test conditions are for a solar um, insulation or a solar ir irradiance of a thousand watts per square meter so when you buy like a 250 watt panel it's assuming that it's a thousand watts per square meter and it's uh, correct or uh, you know the correct tilt and everything else uh, to give you your nominal 250 watts output at a certain load etc etc then you have to get into the load curves and all sorts of things and uh, specifying uh, the output of um, solar systems can get really complex really quickly if you take everything into account so as I speak, here's it's just after uh, 10 a.m. here in Sydney, and here's my live output data that's been updated uh, from home. I left my machine on there, so it does update live. Otherwise, it just waits until the end of the day when I next turn on my computer and uh, downloads all the data because the Sunny Boy Inverter can keep uh, full daily data for up to uh, two weeks. So as long as I up upload it within uh, two weeks it um, should all still be there and I can do all sorts of weird and wonderful things with pvoutput.org I can analyze my uh, data and I can download it and if I had the hardware I could also log the uh, temperature um, each uh, five minutes and I could also log my voltage my uh, mains voltage as well or the output of my uh, solar panels uh, and energy used and power used for example uh, but I don't have any energy meters hooked up that I can actually um, export data on and tie it into the whole uh, system that's more complex I never bothered with that but at least I've got my uh, solar data and allows me to do lots of fantastic stuff here's my weekly uh, chart and just allows me to follow things really quite nicely and how it's tracking and all the data's there and if you want to see one of my worst days, well, it was a couple of days ago. It was pretty horrible here. It was dark, stormy, overcast, like end of the world type stuff all day. And it sort of peaked at about 800 watts there. Maybe the sun shined for two seconds. I don't know. But it was a really horrible day. And it got, you know, right down at one point. It got down to, well, outputting 72 watts from my three kilowatt system a couple of times. Look at that. Pretty horrible stuff. But even that... Uh, day there generated 3.5 kilowatt hours so you know that's on a horrible day that's still pretty good that's probably still uh, the energy I use um, sort of like one third of the energy I use for the whole day so that's pretty much all of my daily energy even on a really horrible day my three kilowatt system generates enough power for me to use
So here's what everyone wants to know. How much power and money have I saved by installing this 3 kilowatt solar power system on my roof? Well, here is uh, three shots of my uh, before and after bills, basically. So uh, the top one there, from July to September 2013, when I have the new solar power system, to my bill in the previous year, July to September 2012, you can see it's dropped from 19.1 kilowatt uh, hours on average for daily usage, down to 12.87 so that's a decrease of almost 33 percent in my grid usage awesome and you can see the other time periods there from october to december and april to june as well once again both when i have the solar system and when i don't and of course there's different uh, daily usage figures there because we're changing the uh, seasons of course you use uh, more or less power summer or uh, winter but look the total average there is a re just over 33 percent i've reduced in my grid power usage so there you go i've automatically reduced my bill by 33 percent right there so that's pretty much exactly what I expected to get because we're not uh, using most of our power during the day when the sun is shining, when we can make use of the energy from the solar panels. We're using it at night when we have to draw it back from the grid. So we're using about two thirds at night and one third during the day. But because the stuff, the one during the power we use during the day is being supplied by the solar panels, bingo, we've got around about a one third reduction. Of course, this might be uh, significantly different for different people who have different usage scenarios if you use a lot of power during the day when the sun's shining then you can get a much greater return than this so that grid power saving of course translates directly into a kilowatt hour energy saving per day and i've got the exact same uh, three uh, quarters worth of bill data there and i've just subtracted the difference in the kilowatt hours per day and the average figure comes out to 5.26 kilowatt hours and we can use that in a minute to calculate our total uh, saving and total payback for this system and if you're curious to actually see my bill, well, here it is and what I'm actually charged. You can see here the charge rate in uh, cents per kilowatt hour is uh, 22.71 cents. Now, um, this has just uh, recently uh, dropped, like in the last year, because we used to have a carbon tax here, which the current government uh, bloody well scrap so our rate did drop but then it artificially went up before that ah it's ridiculous anyway um that's my current rate but i also um pay extra uh 2.8 cents per kilowatt hour here to get 100% uh, audited and accredited uh, green power. My one actually comes from wind farms just up the coast um, somewhere. I forget exactly where, but anyway, there we go. My total usage for the last quarter, 725 kilowatt uh, hours for 85 days. And um, you can see down here that I'm that cost me a total. Of course, there's a service uh, charge as well. Whereas that supply charge, there we go. So I'm getting charged $60 a quarter for the supply charge. I'm not sure what the controlled load is, an extra four bucks. Oh, God, they whack on everything they can everywhere. But anyway, it's $274 a quarter, and that's not much at all. Um, I know somebody else in my street who pays well over $1,000 a quarter for their electricity Oops. Um, yeah, they're doing something horribly long, wrong, like leaving their totally ducted aircon system on 24-7, most likely. Anyway, here is where I get my payback. Here we go, the solar contribution. Here we go, for the 85 days, I generated 858 kilowatt hours. And, of course, I get paid a lousy six cents per kilowatt hour. So uh, roughly one quarter of what I have to buy it for from the grid. That's what I'm um, being paid to feed back into the grid. It's a bloody ripoff. It really is. Anyway, so there you go. I get 51. I got 51 bucks for the last quarter. It doesn't sound like much, but when you count in the uh, one third drop that we looked at before, plus this payback, well, let's look at the total figure. I don't know what it is yet. Haven't added it up. Let's do that. Oh, and just to be clear, that 858 kilowatt hours that they've read here, you remember this is a net metering system. So this is what was uh, read on those two uh, meters. You can see the difference in the figure there, which they read from one to the other. That is the just the energy I've exported to the grid. That's not the energy I generated with the solar panels because you remember I used a third of it. So it would have um, just add an extra third on top of that and that's what I would have uh, generated roughly. And of course, if I 
was home during the day and was able to use all that energy from the solar panels, well, I wouldn't have anything on here. There would be, I'd be exporting nothing to the grid at all, in theory, if I used it all. But of course I want to use it all because I'm only getting paid that lousy six cents to feed it back into the grid and I've got to buy it at like, you know, 25 and a half cents total. So it's better to use it than to feed it back in my particular case. But if you live in an area where uh, you're getting like a one-to-one -one, uh, feedback tariff ratio so you can sell it back to the grid at that 25 cents or whatever it is, then you know, hey, it's better to have a bigger system like that. But for my purposes, it's actually kind of detrimental to have a, a larger solar system. If I put a 10 kilowatt system in there, I'd probably never get the payback because I'd never be able to use all the energy. So I'd only be getting a lousy six cents per kilowatt hour for feeding it back. And as you see, it's only 50 bucks a quarter. It's bugger all. So summing up, what everyone wants to know, was it worth doing this financially? Well, let's take a quick look at the numbers. I averaged a saving, start from the top here up in the green, I averaged a saving of uh, $489 a year based on just that energy saving because I was using uh, one third of my energy during the day from the solar panels. That will vary from person to person, but there you go. It's um, almost $500 a year there. Then in the blue there, we've got the average solar contribution payback i.e. the energy I didn't use during the day I exported back to the grid that's 185 bucks a year because I'm getting a very low uh, feed-in tariff rate of six cents per kilowatt hour could be as much as eight cents per kilowatt hour if I went to another supplier but yeah let's not go there there's arguments both ways um, I that so that's 185 dollars a year so there you go. My total saving per year is $674, and there's been no maintenance uh, so far after um, almost two years installed, but I've got a 25-year warranty on the uh, top-of-the-line LG panels, plus I've got a 10-year uh, warranty on the inverter and the installation as well. So it, during the payback period, it's basically all covered. There should be no extra uh, fees at all. So to install my 3-kilowatt system cost me around about $5,000. Now, I deliberately chose a very expensive system with top-of-the-line LG Mono X panels plus the Sunny Boy uh, inverter. You can actually get 3-kilowatt systems for as little as $3,000 here, but I deliberately paid more. I wanted better quality components that would uh, last a long, long time. So I deliberately paid extra. But anyway, the payback period is that $5,000 divided by the $674 a year that that I'm saving and these are measured figures these aren't calculated they're basically um, uh, pretty much uh, average measured figures that I've got so the payback period is 7.4 years not terrific but considering that I'm in a state which pays a lousy six to eight cents per kilowatt hour I think I'm doing pretty darn good to get a payback in 7.4 years now if you um, bought the cheaper three kilowatt uh, system you can get it for as little as three thousand uh, dollars or if you bought a smaller system I don't need a three kilowatt uh, system so as you can see most of my savings were actually made up in the green there were made in uh, actually saving energy during the day, not for the payback period. So anyway, it could have got away with a smaller system because I get that low feed-in tariff. But assuming you pay $3,000 for a system, that's only four and a half years payback. And that's pretty darn good considering that I live in, once again, a crap state that pays you nothing. If you lived in one of those good states where, or a good country where they pay you at least the same rate you buy it from, then your payback period can be as little as a couple of years. And as I said, uh, New South Wales used to have a 60 cent feed-in tariff. So it was absolutely crazy. It was more than three times what you would actually uh, buy the energy at. And the payback period was like less than 12 months. It was crazy. So there's actually no telling what that uh, tariff is going to do in the future. I don't think it's ever going to go down. I think it's only ever going to go up. You know, a new government gets in, they could actually, uh, you know, change their mind and bump it back up again. That's my hope anyway. And in a couple of years' time, I might have myself an electric car, a fully electric car, and I've got the lifestyle. I live close to home, so I'll be able to uh, even charge it during the day and make use of that uh, excess solar that I'm not actually using. So that'll be fantastic. 
And for those who aren't aware, Australia actually has quite a large percentage of homes adopting solar power. Uh, once again, because of that scheme that the government put in uh, uh, quite a few years back. I think last time I checked, uh, we had about 12% of the homes in the entire country with solar panels on their roof. It's very common around my area. Uh, my street, for example, has like, I think it's about 90% of the homes have uh, solar panels. So extremely popular. But anyway, there you go. Um, it's Yes, it has been very well worthwhile. So I hope you enjoyed that. It's been a bit of a lengthy video, longer than I expected, but I covered uh, quite a few things. So there you go. If you want to discuss it, jump on over to the EEV Log Forum. I'll leave YouTube comments down below or comments on the blog website. And if you like the video, please give it a big thumbs up on YouTube. Thanks. Catch you next time.